Jesus Help Me. Published on July 14, 2016, by Carl Donk. Many years ago, one of my colleagues played a gospel song in the office during a break at one of my previous employers. I generally don't like gospel or any other religious songs, but this one caught my attention because of the nice melody and because the female singer had a pleasant voice. You can listen to the song in the embedded video above. The lyrics, as far as I was concerned back then, were just another fairy tale from the Bible. But because of the melody and the voice, I asked my colleague a copy of the MP3 file so that I could add it to my collection. Needless to say, I listened to it quite often back then. Afterwards there was a long period where I didn't listen to it anymore, to the point where I had forgotten about it. A few days ago, I was going through my MP3 collection and found the song again. And now, after so many years of personal research behind me, the lyrics have a lot more meaning to me, and I want to share that meaning with you below. But before I do that, let me be clear about the fact that I know from my research up to now that the Jesus in the Bible is mainly a personification of the Son. In fact, Jesus Christ means Savior Messiah and is a title that was given to quite a few people in history. Maybe there was a spiritual teacher during the time when Jesus was supposed to have lived, but most of the stories in the Bible are certainly not about him, they are mostly allegories, mixed with occult knowledge about numerology, astrology, sacred geometry as well as political propaganda and even blatant lies. In addition, when it comes to the New Testament of the Bible, many of the Christs and religious teachings from the various different groups and cultures living back then were all unified into a single doctrine during the First Council of Nicaea for political reasons, which people were then forced to accept by law. I'm not going into details on all of this here though, you have Google for that. What I want to make clear is that I'm not a Christian and certainly not a Jesus follower or worshipper, because I know it's all corrupt and mostly based on deception. So moving on to the song, the lyrics are in Dutch, and I'll provide an English translation below. Quote, People gather in a crowd, the children push themselves through, to be able to stand in front. There's tension in the air, a rumor spreads everywhere, the teacher is coming. And a man put to the side of the road, devoid of light from the sun. He heard it was Jesus of Nazareth, and he yelled as loud as he could, Jesus, Jesus, help me. People rebuked him, do not speak with such a loud voice. Keep quiet and keep your decency. But he called even louder, and when Jesus approached him he said, What shall I do to you? And the man put down at the side of the road, threw his cloak aside, gropingly walked to Jesus of Nazareth, clung to him and said, O oh, teacher, teacher, that I can see again. One word from the teacher, and a miracle is done. One word is enough, and I can see. One word from the teacher, and a miracle is done. One word was enough, and he could see. And you're put to the side like a thing, and aren't you allowed any light? When you hear, there is Jesus of Nazareth, then call as loud as you can, Jesus, Jesus, help me. One word from the teacher, and a miracle is done. One word is enough, and you'll see. End quote. If you study the lyrics carefully, you'll find that this song is really about the sun, and about receiving light from the sun, or in other words, about the teacher Jesus, the light of the world, John 8 verse 12, and receiving knowledge, truth or light from him. For example, at the beginning of the song the man doesn't have light from the sun, but then he finds Jesus, the Son, from whom he receives the one word, or light, after which he can see again. It's all right there in the lyrics and blatantly obvious, for those who mistakenly want to take the song literally and think that there was an actual man called Jesus, who physically cured a man from his blindness. Note that the lyrics never mention physical blindness either, but instead say that the man was devoid of light, or wasn't allowed any light. The song is really about our quest in life, to look for any light that we can find, so that we can ultimately see again, and attain enlightenment. When we don't have light in our lives, we live in darkness, we can't see, and we don't know where we are or where we're heading. 
But when we have light, we're able to see. And our journey through life is all about trying to be able to see again, what people often refer to as opening your third eye, and yes, there's no physical third eye, it's a concept. Our journey through life is about gathering experiences, extracting knowledge and valuable lessons from those experiences, and through reflection, filtering out the truth, the one word, or the light, that will allow us to see and understand everything more clearly, the miracle. At the beginning of our lives we all start out like that man put at the side of the road, devoid of light, that is, devoid of knowledge or wisdom or truth. In the current world that we live in, not only do we start out devoid of light, but quite often we're deliberately being denied any light as well, so that we remain ignorant and can easily be manipulated and enslaved. But just like with the man from the song, it's our responsibility to try to search for the light so that we may see again. In fact, we have to demand it, and even make a lot of noise if we have to, in order to make progress. And it's not easy, because once you start to really walk on the path towards enlightenment, calling out for the truth, there will be many around you who will try to stop you or make things difficult for you. Just like all the people in the song who rebuked the man, and told him to stay where he was in darkness, to be quiet, and to keep his decency. If you're on the path to enlightenment, you're bound to stray away from the herd and from their groupthink, and your thoughts and insights will often make many people around you uncomfortable, angry, and sometimes even very afraid. As a result, you might find yourself being attacked by these people in various ways. Regular readers of my blog will recognize this same concept from the movies, the never-ending story, and The Matrix, which I discussed in the third part of my Understanding Women article series. But even in those difficult circumstances, where we may experience resistance from people around us, we shouldn't give up. On the contrary, we have to yell even louder, just like the man from the song. In the face of resistance, we have to speak up, make even more noise and work even harder to find knowledge and truth in order to open our third eye and reach enlightenment. We shouldn't allow anything to hold us back and to keep us in darkness. Like the man in the song, we find ourselves struggling through life, desperately groping around for any bit of light that we can get a hold of and that will show us the way. And once we've found a bit of light, we cling onto it and we get rewarded with the miracle of being able to see again. Like the lyrics say, one word is enough to make us see. That one word is symbolic for the truth. Every bit of knowledge founded on truth has the ability to make us see again. And it's one word, because there's only one truth, we all live in the same reality after all. The laws of the universe are the same for everyone. And it's our responsibility to continuously try to get closer to that one truth, hence the man from the song getting up and gropingly walking in darkness towards Jesus in order to find the light. The journey that I just described above, the continuous quest in life to try to reach enlightenment, is exactly the same concept I discussed in my post on the all-seeing eye and the cycle of life. If you haven't read those posts yet, I encourage you to do so, as you will find the deeper meaning behind the allegories about Jesus in them, and much of the most important symbolism is explained there as well. It's quite sad and unfortunate that many people are brainwashed, often starting from early childhood, with the completely wrong ideas about what exactly these stories in the Bible are all about. It's high time that we put all the corrupted religions and religious institutions aside and start our own personal quests for the truth and enlightenment. Knowledge, truth and enlightenment aren't going to come to us all by themselves, just like the man from the song we have to get up off of our asses and begin to actually make serious efforts towards those goals while ignoring all the resistance around us. And right now it's easier than it's been for a very long time. We've just entered the age of enlightenment, exactly as foretold a long time ago. Now is the time when the dead are finally going to wake up, that is, those who were mentally and spiritually dead are now finally going to wake up because of the abundance of knowledge and the truth and realize who they truly are. As for me, I'm sure that you can imagine that after all the research I've done so far, 
after all the knowledge that I've been able to gather, a lot of which I've already shared here on my blog, hearing those lyrics again, and this time being able to see what they really mean was a very satisfying experience. And the timing was again perfect. It wasn't just by chance that I decided to go through my old MP3 collection again, for no particular reason, it was to find this song again, which I had honestly forgotten that I even had. It was awesome to see the lyrics match so perfectly with my research. And in light of recent experiences that I've had in my life, and my continuous efforts to find and share the truth, finding this song again couldn't have come at a better time. I've basically experienced everything that the man in the song has experienced, and I've acted and responded exactly like he did. And I fully intend to stay on this path going forward. Footnotes Footnote 1 Note that it's the same crowd who gathered in excitement to meet the teacher that tries to prevent the man from getting help. Everyone is always excited and is quick to pay lip service when you talk about the value of the truth, spiritual growth and enlightenment. But as soon as the truth goes against their worldview and threatens it, then they turn against it instead of working towards improving themselves. These very same people who cheered when Jesus arrived would later tell Pontius Pilate to crucify their own Messiah. Talk about hypocrisy. And Pontius Pilate knew Jesus was brought to him because of the envy of his rivals, and that Jesus was innocent. This illustrates the fate that the more enlightened ones on earth have always had to endure. Just look at recent history, many of the people who stood up for the masses end up in jail or are even assassinated betrayed by the very people who they were helping. That's why Jesus, when he was crucified, said forgive them, for they know not what they do. This is the risk of living among, often willfully, ignorant barbarians. And I speak from experience. Footnote 2. It's interesting to note that at the end of the third part of the movie, The Matrix, the main character Neo also becomes blind, and it's in that state that he begins seeing the light the truth, see things as they really are, as it is literally portrayed in the movie with a yellow or golden color. Now you know where that comes from. Thank you for listening. This article was originally published on Carl Donk's blog at blog.carldonk.com. Remember to visit for regular updates. You can also find this content published on archive.org and lbry.tv. Remember to save a local copy of this video and any other content that you would like to continue to have access to in the future. You never know, those goddamn motherfuckers in big tech might censor this content in the future.